I'm just going to get started, you guys. <clears throat> so I've been praying a lot and asking God to give me the way to get this message out there. And um, the, my message that I've been preaching for the past year and a half, um, this one's way more important in my opinion. But, but um, and this is the way I think God showed me that I need to be doing it. I've decided to stop working with the radio station for a while and just... Uh, try to focus on doing videos like this and more YouTube videos on my YouTube channel and I think um, This is what God wants me doing as a matter of fact I know this is what y'all wants me doing so I think God has given me this revelation about flat earth in the end times and I want to share it with you tonight a little while ago I was watching some of Joe Hill's videos another one of my good buddies Joe Hill uh, and I came across something very interesting and started looking into it I was praying and asking God to give me the answers to to the question to my questions and he did in a way that I could have never imagined but this revelation does hurt my heart and it hurts really bad sometimes I've actually shed a lot of tears over this over the past I don't know week or so even today at work on break I was thinking about it and praying like you know how am I gonna get this message out there how am I gonna tell these people what you want me to tell them Lord and I'm just bawling my eyes out because it's it's, it's really hurtful you'll understand why um, I hurt because this message is not one that I'm completely 100% happy with sharing with you guys because it affects all of us. It affects our parents, our friends, uh, other family members, co-workers, maybe even you yourself, okay? Now, the reason it hurts so much is because I fear that more than likely none of these people that I just mentioned will see the truth in time. You know, the world has become so wicked that God has sent a delusion. Go look at 2 Thessalonians 2. And read 2 Thessalonians 2, where Paul says that God will send the world because of their wicked ways a great delusion. And I, I believe that God sent that delusion and Satan took advantage of it with the globe lie. So what better way, I mean, to steal souls away from heaven than to get the whole world to believe that they're just a tiny little speck of dust destined for nothing but death. You know what I'm saying? So I want to really preface this message by reading from the book of John. And the book of Romans to begin with okay um, I always I always want to speak the truth and the truth comes from the Word of God the, the Word of God is the final authority okay and so I want to start off by reading from the book of John and we all know the first verse John 3 16 right but I want to read John 3 16 through 18 okay so for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, as we know, this is Yeshua. This is Jesus speaking, okay? He gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He, now listen, this is very important. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Okay, and then I want to read, go on and read Romans 10, 8 and 9, okay? Romans 10, 8 and 9, Paul writes, But what saith it? The word is nigh, the even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So I wanted to read that first. I wanted to preface with that first, okay? So as we can see, if we believe in Yeshua, we believe that he was born a virgin, he's God, the Word made flesh, go read John 1.14, he died for our sins that we may be saved and live with him eternally, then we are not condemned. But if we do not accept these things, we are condemned, okay? By the way, if you don't know what the word condemn means, it basically means sentenced to death, okay? Is, base, is the basic definition of it, all right? So I wanted to preface with that because I feel that I can be misconstrued when delivering this message and I want there to be no question what I mean and what I'm talking about, okay? So I've been saying for a while that flat earth is not a salvation issue, okay? And it's not necessarily, but just follow me here because I think you'll find it's still a huge issue, especially for you Helio-Christians. Okay, if you're a Christian denying flat earth and telling me that I'm doing the devil's work, blah, 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 you're at, le at very least, you are teetering on blasphemy. Okay, if you are clinging to the globe and believing scientism over God's word, 
you are worshiping the beast and its image. And I'm going to prove that. So my duty is to tell the truth and leave it up to you to find out if what I'm saying is true or not. Okay. It's not my duty to convince you. Okay. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You can lead a man to knowledge, but you can't make him think. Right. So I could die today and I feel completely fulfilled. And here's why I feel like I've done my duty. Several people have come to this truth over the past year and a half that I've been preaching it. Okay. And I know many of you out there have the same testimony. I know it. <clears throat> so here we go. Pay attention guys. Cause here's the message. I truly think that we flat earthers who are in Yeshua, who are in Jesus, who are saved by Jesus will be raptured out of here. And anyone still clinging to the globe will be left here to endure the last half of the final, um, the last half of the final seven years of time. Okay. The, the, the tribulation, if you will. Okay. Now I'll get into the 144,000, um, and flat earthers in a later video, because that's just important. That's just as important. Okay. And I will get into it in another video, maybe tomorrow night, or I have Monday off. Maybe I'll do it Monday. Okay. Um, if you, if, if, if you are trusting scientism more than Yah's word, then his word is not in you. You may say it is, but it isn't. If you are clinging to the globe, you are worshiping the beast and its image. You are not accepting Yah's word as the final authority, and you are instead accepting man's word as your final authority. Real quick, guys, share this out. Share this with all your friends right now. Go share it and and all your flat earth groups and all your truther groups and all your conspiracy groups share it on your page share it with all your friends just share it out there because everyone needs to hear this message and share it while it's live so we can get a bigger audience to come see this message okay but i'm going to keep going paul warns in second timothy 4 2 through 4 to preach the word be instant in season and out of season reprove rebu rebuke excuse me Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And then he says, for the time will come. Now, listen, guys, for the time will come when they when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts, shall, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned on to fables. Uh, I guess I should get to a comment or two real quick, I guess. I don't want to leave you guys out. I feel like a punk doing that. Hey, Milan. Hey, Byron. Thanks for coming over, guys. Hey, Aaron, Joey. Uh, Joey asks, how is the raw food diet going? It's going good. I'm not doing as well as I would like to, but I'm still losing. I'm still cheating. <laughs> um, there's a lot to it, and I'll talk to you about it maybe. Um, uh, maybe over video chat we can talk tomorrow or something soon. We can talk about it, and maybe I can tell you. Uh, Malin says, John, question, what if you want to stay and fight? How does that work? Won't some of us be left behind to educate? And I'm going to get into that, Malin. I am going to get into that in a minute. But basically, the education from us to educate them, because see, the, the world is going to need to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The world will need to be reindoctrinated or reconditioned. That's a better word. The 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 world will need to be reconditioned because they are accepting the beast and his image, which is the globe. The image of the beast is the globe, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, you'll understand it better then, okay? Um, but as far as reconditioning, we are the saints, the 144,000. Like I said, I'll get into that in another video. But we are the 144,000 that will be coming back to re-educate the world. We're going to be taken out, taken out of the last three and a half years. You look fantastic. Thanks, Joey. You, look, you always look fantastic, bro. Uh, appreciate it. Love you, brother. Um, we'll be come back um, after that three and a half years, the final part of the tribulation. We will be coming back to re-educate the world. OK, but I'll get into that all that here in a minute. I want to continue here because I do have quite a bit to go over. Um, now, I do want to say real quick, as far as the beast and what it is exactly, I've looked into it some. My music just keeps going on and off. That's crazy. Now, um, as far as Joey says, how does one get saved? Well, I. If you're asking saved from the rapture and the 666 and NASA the same, awesome. I'm going to get into all this, okay? I'll get into all that, Joey. Great questions, though. 
Uh, Melin says, if I lose you at some point, I'll be back, family around and such. That's all good. The, the, the video will be out there and I'll just continue to share it. Melin, I really love you. Thanks for coming in. And just share it out real quick. Share it with a bunch of people before you leave, Melin. I love you. Um, again, as far as the beast and um, what the beast is exactly, I've looked into this some, and the ISS, the ISS is more than likely the beast that I'm speaking of um, from John's vision in Revelation and in Daniel's vision from Daniel 7, and SpaceX and Elon Musk and all that. I'll leave all that to Joe Hill for now. If you guys don't know Joe Hill, go go check out his videos. He's got great videos on this. Um, He's on to this, and God has obviously put this on his heart to share with you guys. So go talk to him. But for now, um, uh, I think God has put me on another path. So the ISS is going to be on the back burner for right now for me. But here is why I think all of this, guys. First off, three years ago, the spirit of truth moved upon the earth, and knowledge in the land increased, and people ran to and fro with this knowledge. And that's flat earth. And I want to read that in Daniel 12, Daniel chapter 12, 1 through 4. Now, when I first came on to Flat Earth, well, when I first came on to, um, be before I even went down the rabbit hole in Flat Earth, I found this verse, um, and I found it extremely interesting as to what I was researching at the time, but it makes even more sense with the Flat Earth, and I just want to read this, okay? Daniel 12, 1 through 4. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince with sta which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was, sent, was since there was a nation, even at the same time, and at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall found, be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that, they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Now this is the most important part. Check this out. But thou, O Daniel, this is God talking to Daniel, by the way. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. That's telling me that the spirit of truth moved, up, like I said, the spirit of truth moved upon the earth three years ago, 2015, when flat earth blew up. The spirit of truth moved across the world, uh, the earth, and knowledge increased throughout the land and people ran to and fro with his knowledge, right? Okay, that's what that's, that's, what that's saying there in Daniel 12, okay? And that's what happened three years ago with flat earth. So let me continue. When I first came onto Flat Earth, I was scared. I was. First of all, I was ashamed. The, the, the biggest emotion I felt was shame. Because I was so deluded and fooled, and how could I be so stupid, right? But I was scared because I told my wife, and she laughed and scoffed at me. She was the first person I told. And for the first year and a half, she's the only person I told. And she laughed at me. And so I realized that if my own wife would laugh and scoff at me, how was the rest of the world going to perceive me? So I kept it to myself. I shut up. I just went out and did my own research, did my own experiments. And then one day I had so much knowledge on the subject that I had to get it out somehow, get it off my chest, if you will. Once I came out publicly with it, I had no fear whatsoever. I didn't understand it then, but do you know why I had no fear? It's in the Bible why you have no fear about this flat earth. Because Yah was holding my hand. He called me to righteousness. He is using me to open blind eyes. He chose me. Now, I still don't understand why he chose me, but he did. He gave me the truth, and I'm willing to tell the truth, and only the truth. I'm not lying. I'm not trying to deceive in any way. I have nothing to gain in sharing flat earth, and almost everything to lose. And you all know exactly what I mean by that. My intention is one of love and compassion and to tell the truth 100%. This is why I was no longer afraid. And I'm going to read that to you right now in Isaiah 42, 6 through 7. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and give thee for a covenant of the people, for a light of the Gentiles, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, and then that sit in darkness out of the dark house, or out of the prison house. Okay, that's why I was no longer afraid to start sharing flat earth because because it was true. 
and God was holding my hand and he kept me in righteousness. He gave me the truth to give to you. Now, pay attention. I know some folks out there say that the book of Enoch is not biblical text. However, it is endorsed throughout the entire canonized as King James Version. And it gives us insight that we were looking for when reading Moses' account of the fallen angels and giants from the book of Genesis. So listen, in Enoch chapter 80, 7 through 8, Enoch was being shown the prison for the fallen angels because the fallen angels um, had come down and mated with women and, and they conceived the Nephilim, the giants, okay? And so they were punished. God punished them for that. So uh, <clears throat> Enoch was being shown <clears throat> by the angel of the Lord one of the angels of the Lord, that these fallen angels were in prison and he was showing their prison, okay? So the angel of the Lord, Uriel, tells Enoch in verses 7 through 8, he says, And the whole order of the stars shall be concealed from sinners, and the thoughts of those on earth shall err concerning them, and they shall be altered from all their ways. Yea, they shall err and take them to be gods, and evil shall be multiplied upon them, and punishment shall come upon them, so as to destroy all. Did you hear that? It says, the stars, the order, the whole order of the stars shall err, or I mean shall be concealed from the sinners. And the sinners on earth shall err concerning them. And they shall err and take these stars to be gods. Notice what Uriel said about the stars. They're fallen angels, right? We know that. So he said, sinners shall take to be gods. Okay, sinners, humans on earth, right? Seven stars, seven angels, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Pluto, Saturn, Jupiter, and Neptune. And all of those are Roman God names, Roman mythological God names, shall take them to be gods. I'm sorry, I'm getting passionate. Now listen, back to Isaiah 42. We read in Zik, uh, verses, hold on, where is it? No, 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 it's not that one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I have it down as that, but that's not the right one. It is, okay, listen. Isaiah 42, 16 through 23. And I will bring the blind by a way that they know, knew not. I will lead them in paths that they not, not known, that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them and crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them and not forsake them. They shall be turned back, they shall be greatly ashamed. They that trust in graven images, that say to molten images, Ye are our gods. Ye are our gods. These molten images. Ye are our gods, right? What did Enoch say? What did Uriel say? Right? Take them to be gods. Okay. Hear ye deaf and look ye blind that ye may see. Who is blind but my servant or deaf as my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he that is perfect and blind as a Lord's servant? Seeing many things but thou observest not, opening thy ears but heareth not. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes. The word snare means to be caught. You know, in a snare when you walk, you know, you see those movies where the guy's walking and the rope grabs his foot and pulls him upward upside down. That's a snare. All of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses they are for prey, and none delivereth for a spoil, and none saith restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for a time to come? I don't know about you, but I hear him. I hear his voice. I hear his truth. He's my shepherd, and I'm his sheep. That's why I hear him, and he knows me. Okay? So we can see in verse 17... Uh, Isaiah 42, 17, they shall be turned back, they shall be greatly ashamed, that trust in graven images, that say to molten images, ye are our gods. They shall be ashamed, and it's because they've been fooled into worshiping these gods, or fallen angels, or planets, whatever you want to call them. 
And remember in Matthew 24, 14, Yahshua says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto the nations, and then the end will come. We know we're at the end, guys. We all know that. We know that flat earth is former things, that flat earthers are bringing back. We are preaching it to all nations. I found something very interesting. Today, I was researching more of the prophets because I've been studying all the prophets. I'm getting hot. I'm getting, I'm getting, whoo, I'm getting worked up. I was studying, I've been studying the prophets of the Bible because all of them are talking about flat earth. All of them are talking about the, the re-education of flat earth. That's every one of them. So I was studying in Ezekiel today. And I found in Ezekiel 3 something pretty amazing. <laughs> Has to do with what I'm talking about here, kind of. So Ezekiel 3, 16 through 19 says this, And it came to pass at the end of the seven days that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, This is Ezekiel, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear, uh, hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. His blood's on your hands. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and, and he turn not from his wickedness, not from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Okay. I'm digressing a lot and I, I do ramble a lot. I do go into many different things, but I think maybe you understand a little bit. We're given this truth to warn nations, to warn everyone. Flat earth is truth. 100. It's biblical truth. It's former things being brought back from the foundation of the earth. This is Yah's final hurrah, if you will, before he comes to get us. Okay. Flat earthers and Yeshua will be back to recondition the world, Malin, like I was saying a minute ago, a little bit ago. After the last three and a half years of tribulation, because we accepted Yah's truth, his spirit of truth, and did not deny it. Even Helio Christians, okay, Christians who believe in the heliocentric model who are denying flat earth, will need to be reconditioned. Because they are worshiping this. They do not have the word of God in them. They will be saved. They can still live eternally because they have Yeshua. That's why I read in the beginning, John 3, 16 through 18 and Romans 10, 8 and 9. Okay? All you have to do to be saved is believe upon the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, or Jesus Christ, if you will. That's all you have to do. You know, you have to believe that you're a sinner, accept that he died for your sins, and accept that only he can save you of those sins and, and cleanse you of those sins. But, but, all of the prophets in this book, all inspired by the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit of God, talked about flat earth, every single one of them. And if you do not believe me, that's fine. I kind of forbid that people believe what I say. Just go read this. This is, should be your final authority, not my word. Like I said earlier, that's the problem with the world today, is they are accepting scientism and God's word as final authority over God's word as final authority. And it, it really gets to me, man. It gets to me. I, anyway, I'm sorry. Let me, let me get back. <sighs> but again, the reconditioning thing and the 144,000 and all that, I will get into that in more detail with scripture in a different video. Okay, I will. I promise. It looks like nobody's even here watching me anymore. Uh, does anybody have any questions if you're here? I feel like I kind of ruined this whole thing by not getting you guys involved and... I don't think anybody's here anymore. If anybody's here, let me know. Looks like everybody's left. <laughs> Alright. Well, I'm just, it doesn't look like anybody's still here. But I'm going to keep going for people to watch this in the future. Okay? Because I still got a few more things to say. We're going to be judged if we do not spread this truth. We need to be sharing this with everyone. 